Well, good morning, friends, and Happy New Year. I'm so happy to be here with you for the first broadcast for Facebook Live of Rise and Shine for 2023. Is it amazing how quickly the years are clicking by? I can hardly believe that here we are at the beginning of the year again. Feels like we just got here for 2022. But I am happy to say that we can put 2022 to bed now and we can move into 2023, you and me, in a whole new way. Oh, there's Pastor Susie. Good morning, honey. You know, we all need, oh, what happened there? My goodness. We all need direction, how we're going to live better. And we have to be able to take direction. We need to be teachable. We need to understand that we don't always have it all together. I sure don't. And this morning proved that to me because I was trying to get ready so diligently for coffee time. And of course, everything went backwards. You ever have that happen? <laughs> and then you got to make a decision. Am I going to continue to let my emotions go that way? Or am I going to take authority and control over my own emotions and bring them back into a place of alignment with my spirit so that I don't react or blow up or get mad, but I respond to the situation properly and I get back on track. Good morning. There's Christine, my sister in love. So we all need direction how to live better. I don't care if we're two years old, 22 years old, 82 years old, or 120 once we get there. Hallelujah. We all still need direction from the Lord. So this morning, I believe my scripture gives us so much direction as we move out of the old and into the new. And it's in Ephesians 4, 22 to 30. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its de deceitful desires and to be made new where in the attitude of your mind, because how you think will be the key to how you live. So we're going to put off the old self, which is being corrupt by its deceitful, dece deceitful desires and to be made new in the attitudes of your minds and to put on the new self. Put on the new self. That doesn't mean that's just going to happen automatically by osmosis. We just become. No, we put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, how do we do that? Therefore, each of you, me and you, must put off falsehood. There's a lot of falsehood in the body of Christ today. Put it off and speak truth. Hello, speak truth to your neighbor because we're all members of the same body. And in your anger, do not let the sun go down while you're still angry and do not allow it or afford yourself to be angry and sin. It says, if you're angry, do not sin. Do not use it as an excuse to do things that are wrong. If you're angry at someone, then talk it out. Don't talk to somebody else about it. Talk it out. Bring it to the right place. Apply the right measure of understanding and grace. And deal with the issue. And don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. Are you mad about something before you go to bed? Straighten it out. Do not give the devil a foothold because as soon as we open that door and we operate in a spirit of anger that allows us to move into a sinful place, then the devil's in. He loves the arena of the flesh. And as soon as we get out of the spirit and into the flesh, then the devil comes in and that's where he does his work the best. It goes on to say, anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work and do something useful with their own hands that they might have something to share with those who are really in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk 
come out of your mouths, but only that which is helpful for building up of others according to their needs. There is so much unwholesome talk in the body of Christ still. Talking bad about people for no reason at all, just to make even alliances with another person, you'll talk bad about somebody else so that you can kind of be friends in that area. That is so wrong and so ungodly before God. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Only that which is helpful for building up of others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who are listening. Hello? You know what it says about godless chatter? That it hurts the listener. And the only cure for godless chatter is to cut it off in Jesus' name. Just like a leg that has gangrene that will infuse and infect the whole body if we don't cut it off. And I'm telling you, in 2023, God is searching you and me. And he is going to expect from us that we are responsible to operate out of the word of God in our lives and stop these things. No unwholesome talk. Not getting angry and just sinning because you're mad. But being understanding and going to bed with the right heart. Speaking truthfully with one another and putting off falsehood and lies. Put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. And you, me and you, put on the new man. You see, the pull of the old life is always operating in our lives today. It always operates. This morning, the pull of the old life was after me because I was in a hurry and I had things to get done and I wanted to do my first year coffee time. And of course, everything got upset and sideways and I had to make a decision. Am I going to get frustrated and upset and use that as an excuse to be mad, to have a fit, to lose my place? No, I had to come back to the decision of operating out of God's grace. It's all gonna be okay. It doesn't really matter anyway. If I had been two minutes late, if I hadn't have been able to get on right on time, my ring went out, I couldn't find the right ring, the dogs were carrying on, like everything happened this morning. But I'm not gonna allow that to make me lose my peace. I wanna live in that eternal state of well-being. So I have to take authority over the things that try to control me and take me off track. The old life is always pulling on us and we have to recognize it and reject it. All those false underlying thoughts and assumptions that come from the old self, bad attitudes, <laughs> stinking thinking, critical ways that we perceive others. That's what caused the problems in the past. And these are the things we have to reject. We can't allow the devil to twist things that people say or twist meanings and what they're trying to in, uh, say to us. Because when from my heart to your heart, the devil can get in there and twist things and you'll hear something I didn't even say. Putting off means to divest ourself of something or take it off. Take it off. Discard it. Paul uses the simplest of terms to illustrate what we must do in the realm of thought and in the attitudes of our life. Good morning, Joyce. Hi, Melissa. Going to see you soon. We must reject the basic assumptions that have caused us trouble in the past, putting them off, rejecting them, ridding ourselves of them in the same way that we would like take off our dirty clothes. I wouldn't wear my dirty clothes all week. So why would I allow wrong thoughts, wrong attitudes to stick to me for hours or days sometimes? I, I used to live in a situation with someone that I was married to before I have my awesome husband now. And it would be days and weeks where he would f be brewing and s not speak and angry and use it for an excuse to be hurtful because of all the stuff that he wouldn't let go of that was on the inside of him. He wouldn't put it off. He, he wouldn't put on the new man. If we don't do what the word of God tells us to do, how can me and you be the new? 
We have to do our part. The word of God is contingent on us being part of the process. Come on, we need to be part of the process of the word. A word of God that comes over you, that's spoken over you, a prophetic word can never come to pass if you don't align yourself with it, if you don't step into it. We have to be active participants in the walking out of the healing of God, in the walking out of the deliverance of God, in the walking out of the changing nature that the Holy Spirit will bring into our lives if if, uh, we will yield to it. If, if, it's a big word for two little letters. If we will yield to it. When I want to flip out and get mad, like I was earlier this morning, I had to yield to the Holy Spirit that said, Maeve, take a downer, it's okay. (laughs) And then, as soon as I said, yes, I'm not gonna get upset, that peace, I can feel it now, that peace comes over me and I don't have to react. It's my choice. I can push past that peace that comes and still have my way and have my say. Or I can let God have his way and I can just come back into that place of peace where I'm not frustrated, I'm not upset because the devil is always going to try to do that to us. Why? So we will not have peace and we will not walk in the blessing of God. Today, I choose peace. I chose peace and I am going to walk in the blessing of God because I chose peace. I'm not going to let the devil mess up my day. You see, the corruption of life comes from wrong attitudes. Paul said that the former manner of our lives were corrupt. They were. We lied. We cheated. We told stories about people we shouldn't have said. And if you're still doing that, then you better check your salvation. Because this year, your salvation is going to get checked over and over and over again by the power of God. Because it's time for the rubber to meet the road. And if you are not who you say you are, then you're going to have to get in line with the word of God and become who God planned you would be by yielding to the Holy Spirit and letting him have the freedom to rule and reign in your life. Because the old life was decayed. It was selfish. It was unhappy. It was restless. We were never satisfied. And these are the things that made us unhappy, made us miserable lots of times. Thank you, Carmen. Happy New Year. You see, Paul points out that we can recognize these attitudes by the way they operate and they're deceitful lusts. If we're operating in disbelief and we're all upset and we we can't see God in it, then we're not operating in faith at all. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we can't just keep speaking wrong things over our situation. We have to take authority over our thoughts and over our mouth and begin to speak the word of God and speak faith over our situation, or we're never going to have what God wants us to have. We have to be active participants in the change in our life. We have to be active participants in walking out the word of God in our life. We have to be active participants with God in the new life. You see, we don't understand the word lust. We associate it with something that's sexual, but it's much broader than that. It means an urge or a basic drive. And deceitful urges constantly operate if we don't take authority over them and we continue to react in old ways to situations that we don't want to particularly deal with in our lives. But guess what? Life is full of circumstances and we got to learn to deal with them. You think about the man who laid by the pool of Bethesda for so many years. I think it was, I can't even remember the number of years right now that he laid on that mat. And the people would go down to the water when the angel stirred it so they could get healed. And he just laid there waiting for somebody to get him down there and help him because he wouldn't move by faith on his, on his own. He had to have somebody else to help me. And Jesus came by him and said, do you really want to be healed? And the guy said, well, I don't have anybody to help me. And he started making all these excuses. And Jesus said, get up and take your mat with you. Now, why didn't Jesus say, get up and take that mat and throw it in the garbage? No, no, no. Because the mat, the circumstances of his life 
Take it with you. Learn how to deal with it. You're above the circumstances. But if we always let the circumstances keep us down and keep us weighted down, we will never overcome. It's our choice. We have the overcoming spirit on the inside of us, but we have to tap into that and be willing to overcome. Come on, they're always going to operate these urges, but we have to be ready to face and embrace even the hard things. And how do we do that? By submitting to the power of the Holy Spirit. We have on the inside of us the hope of glory, the hope of every situation. He is the healer. He is the deliverer. He is the one that leads us all into all truth. He will show us things to come. He's our comforter. He's the paraclete. He's the one that comes alongside. He is never going to leave us or forsake us. He is always with us. All we have to do is press into that truth. When we want to go crazy, let's just press into God and be made right and sane and whole and stop flipping off the handle. Take a hold of your emotions and be who God has called you to be. The first step is learning to put off the old. Stop being who you were if you want to be somebody new. Just stop it. Take a hold of the power that is afforded to us by the Holy Spirit to become the new, the new creature, to become the new creature. All things are new in me and you, but not if we don't appropriate that in our lives. Then recognize, you know what? This new life is available, but I have to be made new in the attitude of my mind because how I think is how I'm going to live. We need a new mindset. We need the washing of the water of the word to brainwash us. We need the washing of the water of the word to bring us into alignment with the way that God wants us to live. We can't keep living out of our head, our head. We need the mind of Christ that allows us to live from the place of our heart once it's been softened and touched by the Holy Spirit. You know that old saying, my mind is out to get me? Absolutely unless you get a hold of it, pull down those vain imaginations and stop the toxic thoughts by thinking God thoughts and be made new, Paul said, in the attitude of your mind. You know, even non-believers realize that things are wrong in their lives and they change them by their own self-will, but they're changed because of another expression of the same basic egocentric ego centricity. It's all ego. It's all self-made. It's all, I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm, I'm. There's no power of the Holy Spirit involved there. So they change, but it's just a change to another expression of who they are. Not the new, but the old made new. And that's not what God does. He doesn't make the old new. He makes you new, new. He doesn't take the old. He leaves the old, leave the old behind and step in to God's plan. God's new. You see, believers who have been renewed in the attitude of their mind understand that God thoughts are higher than even good thoughts. And we need to press into his word. We need to chart the course of our life through God's word. And we have to be active participants in that. We can't just quote the scripture, know the scripture. We got to walk in the scripture. The Lord told me the only word you really know is the word that you do. He does not make the old new. He makes the new new. Come on. He wants the new in me and you. He's not just going to recycle the old. No, no, no. That's not the way God works. Behold, all things are new. But the active participation in that has to come from me and you. When we believe in Jesus and we receive him as our Lord and Savior, then we start the process of being renewed in the attitude of our minds. You see, the new self is in the likeness of God. It's in the image of Jesus. It's how his life is lived in and through you and me. But I can stop that process. I can push that process down. I don't have to let Jesus out. I can hold him in bondage the same way that I keep my wrong attitude. I have to be willing to say, God, 
Live in me, live through me. Be, let me be like you. Help me to be like you as I yield my wrong ways to the right way. You see this, I had this morning my Mrs. Always Right cup. Because you can't be Mrs. or Mr. Always Right. You have to realize that we need direction in our life. How to live better. Paul said, put on that kind of life. It's available to you. If you let go of the old and choose the new, but you don't have to. You see, the choice is always up to me and you. <laughs> it's always up to me and you. And there's many people that say they're saved or they think they're saved, yet they still operate out of the old attitude and mindset of the past. And how do you know that? Because it's evidenced in their continued old behaviors, still gossiping, still talking bad about people, still making alliances with others by putting down somebody else. That is old. But guess what? The enemy is always at work in that realm, always trying to get us to say something we shouldn't say, do something we shouldn't do. And if we're not renewed in the attitudes of our mind and actively participating in the plan of God for us to become those butterflies and fly above the situations or those eagles that soar high and strong, then it won't be long before we're back doing the same old thing because we did not put off the old, actively participating, and put on the new. Because that is up to me and you. That is our decision. You see, we've been given the gift of free will. And we are the only one who can choose the new life and the new way. And guess what? I have to do it every day. <laughs> I have to do it every day. I had to do it this morning. And I'm probably going to have to do it tomorrow too. And I'm no different than you. I have to choose his way every day. But when I get up and I choose to do things God's way, when I choose to say things God's way, when I choose to operate out of the spirit instead of the flesh, then I'm at my best and I won't be given over to the corruption and the wrong things that only the flesh will bring. But I will move in the spirit and I will hear the song that heaven sings and I will walk in the truth because I will actively participate. I love it. Participating, cooperating in harmony with the Holy Spirit. Come on. I must take off the old man and no longer let him live in me. For in Christ, it's the new man that I choose to be. I reject and refuse the things I used to say and do, and I put on the new things that make me more like you. I take off judgment. I choose to be meek. I give up my self-will, for it's yours, Lord, I seek. Dishonesty no longer operates as in truth I choose to live. I give up hostility for harmony no longer bitter, I forgive. My ego is surrendered to humility and selfishness for service, cheating for honesty. In faith, I'm no longer nervous. I lay down my desire to blame, taking personal responsibility. I'm the one who makes the choice. My behavior belongs to me. Dissatisfaction for contentment, performance for learning to yield, laying down gossip and godly chatter so I can be fully healed. Do you know those things keep us from walking in divine health? Those things keep us from receiving the fullness of God. Lay down gossip and godly chatter so that you can be fully healed. Self-will for self-control. Shame for confession. Taking full responsibility helps me learn the lesson. Hallelujah. 
giving up jealousy, suspicion, and disbelief for trust, ill speaking for a good report, unfairness for being just. No longer will I be double-minded, exchanging doubt for faith and trust in putting off the old things Putting on the new is a must. Come on. This year, be an active participant in the things that God wants for me and you. Let's be fully made new. But let's be actively participating in the taking off of the old when it comes to haunt us and try to come back on us. Let's Put on the new, me and you. Let's take hold of the wrong thoughts and pull them down before they take us into bondage. Let's pull them down and examine them for what they are. Lies from the enemy that he is trying to seduce us to believe so that we can't receive. And then forgive yourself and move on, choosing to live right instead of wrong. (laughs) Come on. It's the rubber meets the road season in God. 2023, come and take a closer walk with me, says the Lord. Be made more and more like me so that others will look at you and see the love and the grace, the change that's taken place. Because you were willing to lean, you were willing to yield, you were willing to to submit, and I will make you fit for the master's use. But you have to be willing to actively participate today if you really want to walk in the fullness of my way. Come on, let's be active participants and let's do our very best in 2023 to do what the Lord says and take a closer walk with me. Hallelujah. I love you and I am with you in this. I am being made more and more like Jesus every day, but only if I participate in that way. I have to be willing to lay down myself, lay down my will and pick up the will of God for me so that I can walk in freedom and liberty. I love you all. God bless you all. Happy, happy, happy new year. And I know the best is yet to come. I love you. God bless you. See you next week.